Now another interesting topic that is the sword of Tipu Sultan and the wood steel. Tipu Sultan was the ruler of Mysore till 1799 and there were four wars which he fought with the Britishers which are called as the Anglo-Mysore war. Tipu Sultan's sword which is there was very very famous and it had a speciality that is why Tipu's sword has been kept in the museums of Britain. It had a sharp edge which could rip through the opponent's armor and it was so sharp that the armor actually collapsed. It was made from a carbon steel which is called as woods and in South India we see that this particular method of making woods is very very common. When it is converted to making swords, the pattern which comes out is called as the flowing water pattern. This is made in a very special way wherein they put it in the smelting furnaces, and this is found in so many places in and around Mysore. Iron and charcoal is mixed and is put into the clay pots and a particular temperature is maintained and the iron which comes out is the wood steel. It is called by different names in various languages of India. For example, in Kannada, woods is called as Uku, in Telugu it is called as Huku and in Tamil and Telugu it is called as Uruku. So, Tipu Sultan was such a great ruler that his sword was a mystery for so many scientists of the world that they came and studied thoroughly as to what was it made of and how was it made. Michael Faraday, the legendary scientist and the discoverer of electricity and electromagnetism was so much surprised by the woods that he came to India and studied for four years the sword of Tipu Sultan and the making of woods in India. As far as the wood is concerned in India which was so common in Mysore and in places like Bihar and central India where you can where you could find smelters in every district started slowly dying in the 19th century. For the simple reason that the Britishers had invaded India and they did not give encouragement to this industry besides the sword also slowly died. The furrens of this particular industry was made of a clay and sun dried bricks. Generally the smelting was done by the men and the women worked in the bellows. Thus, the work was equally divided between the men and the women, even in the furences. Of course, the further hitches or the glitches to this industry were that the forest laws were made in India, which strictly said that the Indians were not allowed to enter the forest and collect any wood from there, which means that the wood was not available for charcoal. So, how could these forenses be run? This was the problem which came up and sometimes when they were relaxed that is the Indians could enter the forest they had to pay a very heavy tax and after paying that tax there was no profit left for the Indians. Therefore, this industry which was so famous which was so astonishing and which left people like Michael Faraday wonderstruck slowly died in India. The iron and steel industry in India also died because now the iron and steel was taken from Britain and thus no encouragement was given from the British government towards the woods industry.